Hi everyone, welcome back to Susan Dawn Ascension Connections, part of Susan Dawn Spiritual Connections. You can always find me on my main channel, Susan Dawn Spiritual Connections, for more Sacred Union Energy updates. Here is where we do the deep dives, and I have been called for the past couple of months to kind of pivot back over here and shift the focus here. We're not ignoring the Sacred Union stuff, we're not going to be negating that or neglecting that, that's still going to be very prominent. But I have been called to shift more into the Ascension landscape. And for those of you who are on the Sacred Union path of Ascension, that is that you've been catalyzed to your Ascension journey with a counterpart, then this is going to have resonance for you as well because we're going to dive deeper into those connections, understanding those connections, and the Ascension journey, the path of Ascension as a whole with regards to those Sacred Unions. But Sacred Union is not all there is. Um... That is not the the whole of the ascension, it's just one path. And so we're going to be doing some of the deep dives with regards to ascension, messages for humanity, um, messages for lightworkers, etc. I've just been called to that over the past couple of months. And now that I am back from my spiritual pilgrimage, we're going to be diving deeper into that. Now, for those of you who are new here, or those of you who didn't know, um, basically a day after my 40th birthday, I hopped a plane and I went to Europe. This was three years in the making and the manifestation. I dreamed of this spiritual pilgrimage three years ago, had no idea how it was, how it was going to come to fruition. Uh, and then about six months ago, I mentioned it, I had mentioned it to anybody, but I mentioned it to a friend and soul sister who lives in England, and she said, Glastonbury is right near me. I mentioned I, I was called to Glastonbury, to Lourdes, and I didn't know where else I wanted to go, but I knew it was spiritual pilgrimage to England, to Glastonbury specifically, and then to the country of my heart, of my soul, France. I've been to France before. Um, that was the place of my massive, my first really initial spiritual awakening back in 2008. Um, I didn't know it was a spiritual awakening at the time, not until my ascension journey that I was able to look back. I thought it was just, you know, a, a crazy adventure, the trip of a lifetime where I was just a hot mess of anxiety and homesickness. Uh, but during that trip, uh, the owner of the inn actually took me to see her friend who was a psychic medium in another village. And that's where I had my first Reiki session, my first mediumship session. And when I got back from that trip, the whole trip was just magically connected for me. I met so many people that helped me and guided me when I was just an anxious and homesick mess. Um, and I share a little bit about that in my journal entries on the blog. For this trip, you can check that out here on susandawnspiritual.com slash blog. Um, or you can view it in the community post over on Susan Dawn Spiritual. Uh, Susan Dawn Spiritual Connections. Um, but when I got home, that's when I really began to take psychic development courses and I had a spiritual mentor and take classes and really dive deep. I discovered by happenstance Dolores Cannon's books and that really helped to expand my mind and expand my consciousness and understanding. I've always been innately spiritual. Uh, when I was very, very young, I spoke to angels. That had been forgotten. I had forgotten that. I had forgotten how connected I was. Even to Mother Mary, I was so divinely connected to her. I remember I would just, when I got the new Celine Dion CD, I would just listen to Ave Maria over and over and over. And I had the... Um, Ave Maria card taped to my mirror. Now, I'm not a religious person. When I was around 13, after I was confirmed, I kind of renounced Catholicism, renounced the church. Um, but I always felt connected. In nature, I always felt connected to some source, to some kind of God. And it was never about religion for me. It was always about connection. And when I was going through another major catalyst of Lyme disease and illness, I learned to connect back to God. Um, that was a major, a major reckoning for me, a major spiritual awakening and activation for me. And then when I met a counterpart, a twin, um, my twin, that's when I was activated to the ascension journey. And it was a deeper level of coming home to the self, deeper level of recognition, diving deep into the shadows in order to understand the light, opening up my mind to new levels of consciousness. I always say that ascension is like a whole new ball game, and it truly is. No matter how many levels and layers of spiritual awakening we go through, and I'm 
living proof that we go through many, we go through many spiritual awakenings throughout our lifetime, leveling up and up and up and up and up. The deeper we go in and in and in and in and in. It's like that inward spiral. The deeper within the self you go, the deeper within the soul that you go, the higher your consciousness and the higher your frequency. And ascension is like a whole new ball game that helps you clear out the old programming and patterns and trauma and grief and and toxicity to really connect you back to that source energy within you and that source energy that is part of all, that interconnectedness. And you go through awakenings that help you really connect to and understand and anchor in, anchor into your human form, that spirituality, that spiritual connectedness, that interconnectedness. That's what unity consciousness is all about. It's about recognizing the all within all. And so what we're learning on this ascension journey is it's not one or the other. It's not spiritual or human. It's about the bridge of both. And you are the bridge. And you can check out the other sacred channelings here on Susan Dawn Ascension Connections for much more of those teachings and much more of those channelings. Today, I want to share some experiences that I had. So I, I had mentioned to my friend and soul sister, she was once a client and she turned into an amazing friend and soul sister who is so gifted in her own right. I use her deck all the time. Her name is Luna Marie. She is the Spiritual Warrior UK. Um, and we also met another friend who was also one of my very first clients, also an amazing healer. Um, she's who I go to for all of my clearings and healings. Um, her name is Kelly from the Amethyst Temple. All those links are available um, on my website in the link exchange. All of my trusted soul sisters um, who I go to for healings or clearings or or readings, um, if I need that support or that guidance, they're all listed um, in, in my link exchange over there. Um, so I mentioned to, to Luna that I, I, I had this dream and she said, I live right by Glastonbury, come and stay with me. So I did. And so six months ago, that dream that I had held for, for three years, that call in my heart that I had held for three years, and I just saw 717 on the timer, and that's going to relate to this reading here, um, it began to take form, it began to take shape. And there was a lot in between then and now. And there was a lot between my first journey 15 years ago to France and that spiritual awakening and now. And as we were planning, we decided to go to Carcassonne, which was the site of that first spiritual awakening for me 15 years ago, which was a full circle moment for me. So I spent some time in Bath, England, which also connects to me because I'm very connected and love the romantics and especially Emerson's transcendentalism, which I didn't realize until reflecting in my journal. Um, it's amazing how so much is connected and you don't really understand it or realize it until you look back. And that's the benefit of looking back. That's the benefit of reflection. Um, it doesn't mean that you stay stuck there. It just allows you to see how connected everything is and how divinely guided your life truly can become. And you use that wisdom and you take that insight and you carry that forward into the next steps and what you're creating forward. Um, so I spent a week in Bath, um, which is a, a ancient city. It dates back to the Roman Empire. Um, also connects for me with Jane Austen and literature, which is my other life, my other um, my authorship in my other business and stuff. Um, but it also connects to that transcendentalism and the romanticism and the elegance and softness and spirituality that I've always felt connected to. I had amazing experiences in Bath, um, including meeting somebody who just blew me away um, in the way that that connection was just divinely brought in. It was a stranger who we just had a soul exchange, and it was a beautiful um, experience. You can check that out on um, my blog, or you can check out the live stream that I did, the channeling and chat, where I shared some channelings and shared some stories about my trip. I'll put all the links in the description box below so you don't miss anything if you would like to dive deeper. Um, and then we went to Glastonbury, which is what I'm going to talk about today. And Glastonbury blew me away. I knew I was called there. Um, I knew that I was called there with the soul sisters, Luna and Kelly. I had no idea it was going to be like this. Um, then we were brought to Lourdes, which I will talk about in maybe some further videos, definitely in some further videos, but also on the blog. Um, 
and what was experienced there, I didn't quite understand why I was called to Lourdes. Again, I'm not religious, and I kept saying that to myself and fighting with myself, but I'm not religious. Why am I here? Um, but it wasn't about religion. It was about connection, and Mother Mary actually came to me in a ceremony. Luna and I spent um, our third day there just hanging out on the banks of the river in the sunshine, and I ended up doing a meditation, having a beautiful ceremony, and basically a baptism with Mother Mary. And I'll share the transmissions and the messages with that um, both in the blog and in a, another video coming up because um, she's actually stepping forward now and saying that there is more to process for me and there is more to be shared and more to be understood. More insight will be coming through. Um, and then we went to Carcassonne and Carcassonne was just a full circle moment for me. Uh, it was just... Um, closure of the past years of my life and it was just full of joy and and just happiness and and peace and all along the way we were just so guided and um well, I'll share more about that later. So we were just very, very guided, um, including with the travel. You know, there was a huge uh, line coming in um, to the passport control and um, I, there was a, a shorter line over here and we said to ourselves, Luna and I looked at each other and we're like, well, I'm just, just go to that shorter line. We didn't know why everybody was kind of congregating here and we just kind of flew through passport control and as we went into France and the trains and flights were all on time and it was so smooth and so easy. Such a difference from my previous journey where I missed flights and missed trains and I, I missed my ride up the mountain and it was just a, a, a mess. And so this was just so divinely guided. And I think that's what really happens when you open yourself up and just don't have preconceived expectations, but you just allow yourself to go with the flow and let things shift and let things change and just manifest your, your highest potential. Um, and just believe in your highest potential. You just believe in, okay, this is what I'm meant to experience. This is what I'm meant to see. This is what I'm meant to do. And um, you just have this innate feeling of trust and you anchor into that presence and you anchor into that trust and you anchor into that faith and you recognize that you're part of the universe. You're part of all. And so you move in that flow. And that's what I experienced. And it was just magic, magic. And I'm going to be talking about this trip for a while to come because there was just so much that was experienced there um, and so much that I'm still going to be understanding and receiving um, as far as all the pieces and how they play a part both in my personal life and in the ascension journey that we're all sharing. My personal life, of course, is personal to me um, because I'm on this ascension journey as well. Um, my personal life is is personal in the way that I'm having experiences, but you're going to be having experiences in your journey, in your life, that's going to connect to spirituality for you. So allow yourself to embrace that and allow yourself to recognize that. You don't, I said this in the live stream, you don't have to hop on a plane and, and go to Europe to have these experiences. That was just my dream. Travel is so important to me. And that's just where I was guided. You might be guided to write a book. You might be guided to sing a song on stage as an artist. You might be guided to um, help save a life as a doctor. Um, you might be guided just to go to teach in a school. Um, as a teacher, you might be guided to any number of things. Trust where your soul is guiding you. Everybody has a piece of the puzzle. And your piece, the more authentic you are to you, the more you're in touch with your soul, the more you're being led by your heart and following that heart's guidance, you're fulfilling that piece for the rest of us. So everybody has a piece. There is no competition. There is no comparison. Everybody plays a part. You are meant to be here where you are doing what you're doing. And if you don't like what you're doing, you have the power to change that. You have the choice to change that. And just by taking that first initial step, the universe will respond to that and will bring in more opportunities for you so that you continue to take those steps. This trip didn't happen willy-nilly. I've been through my own shit. I've been through hell and back. And 
to, to bring me here to this place of peace and presence and joy within. But this was a hard fought battle, just as you're fighting a hard fought battle within yourself. When I say fighting a hard fought battle within yourself, most of that comes from allowing yourself to surrender and just say, okay, I don't have to fight anymore. I don't have to fight myself. I don't have to fight my ego. I can surrender to the guidance of my soul. And the more in your authenticity, in your genuine truth of who you are, the more you embrace who you are and love who you are. That's what we mean by alignment. That's what we mean by walking your soul's path. That's what we mean by standing in your truth, by being who you are, without worry about what other people think, without comparison to others. The more that you are being you, the more you're going to be led to more peace, to more joy. The work was in clearing all those toxic patterns and habits and ego control and all that what I like to call that soul sludge that was keeping you from recognizing yourself. This is a journey first and foremost home to yourself. So that being said, <laughs> let's get into this trip. So Glastonbury. Glastonbury is the heart chakra of the earth. It's known as the heart chakra of the earth. And it is basically a spiritual epicenter through which all the ley lines actually converge. And my friend and I actually looked up all the ley lines and I don't understand ley lines and how they work. I understand them energetically, but not like how they're calculated and things like that. There are people who are much smarter than me who do, who are really connected to that. Um, so you might be able to share a little bit more information on that with me. Um, but it's through it's the center through which all of the ley lines actually converge as the heart center of the earth. And Spirit's actually bringing to me now uh, a channeling that we did way back in the beginning when I first started my Susan Dawn Spiritual Connections channel was the Bridge of the Heart. And how you have all seven chakras, the main seven chakras, we have more than seven, but the main seven chakras that make up our energetic body, you have the masculine energy, which is in the bottom three root chakras, the root chakra, sacral chakra, and the solar plexus chakra. Then we have the feminine energy, which makes up the higher three chakras, which is the crown chakra, the third eye or brow chakra, and the throat chakra. Now, remember, when we're saying masculine or feminine energy, we're not creating a separation and we're not creating a division. That's the illusion. You have masculine and feminine energies within you, and that you can see by how all the chakras work together. The, the chakras work in union, the masculine and feminine energies work in union. When you kind of go outside of ourselves, that's what creates separation, that's what creates division. And so the fourth chakra is the heart chakra. And so what happens is the masculine and feminine rises and the feminine brings those templates down. The feminine energy um, exists kind of in the higher realms and the masculine energy is the one that grounds that energy. So the masculine energy that rises becomes the conscious masculine, meets the feminine as she brings those energetic templates down. And where do you meet? You meet on the bridge of the heart. And we had channeled that message in a sacred union energy update called meet me on the bridge of the heart. And from there, what happens is, um, unconsciously doing this, you meet like this and it then expands in, in really beautiful ways. The, the light expands, the love expands, the connection expands, it reverberates. So um, the heart chakra of the earth through which all the ley lines converge, that energy reverberates. Um, Glastonbury is all the site, also the site of Arthurian legend. So King Arthur and Queen Guinevere, um, and Merlin, can't forget Merlin. He plays a pivotal part in my experience. Um, the Tor, which is a huge hill basically. And then there's a tower on it that used to be St. Michael's Cathedral. It's the ruins. There's only one tower that's remaining. Um, but that used to be the site of Avalon. And who else is getting chills right now? Um, that, that's said to be the site of Avalon. Glastonbury Abbey which is filled with such peace. So after we experienced these other sacred sites, um, Luna and I went to Glastonbury Abbey and it was just peaceful. That's all, that's all I felt. It was just felt peaceful. Almost like that site allowed us to integrate everything else that we had experienced. Um, so Glastonbury Abbey is said to be the final burial site of King Arthur and Queen Guinevere. Um, it's also linked to early Christianity, including pagan and Wiccan origins. Um, Joseph of Arimathea, who is said to be Jesus's uncle, and who was, he, I believe he was the one who um, took care of Yeshua's body after the crucifixion, were said to, 
um, he went to Glastonbury and he established um, a church there. Um, so that's all connected there. It's also said to be the site of the Holy Grail. And Chalice Well, which is a garden and sanctuary, it's on a hill, it's called Chalice Hill. There's a well there um, that is said to be the site of the Holy Grail, or it was once the site of the Holy Grail. And it's a, a pure spring source of water, and there are some iron deposits. It's known as the, the Red Well because of the iron deposits, um, but mythologically speaking, it's known as the Red Well because of it was the site of the Holy Grail. Um, the chalice number one through which Yeshua is said to have um, drunk from at the Last Supper, but also the, the chalice through which the blood was collected. Now, that's all biblical. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm not religious. I do have a basis in Christianity. I do have a foundation in Christianity. Um, but I am more open spiritually. I also have beliefs that are anchored in, um, with regards to Buddhism, Hinduism, Judaism. Um, it, it just speaks to my truth. Um, I don't uh, adhere to one specific religion, um, I have expanded and opened throughout my life to what just speaks true for me. So um, take that as it resonates for you, um, but Glastonbury being a very spiritual and energetically connected sacred site. So we went to Chalicewell first, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to read from the blog my experiences because I just can't, I, I can't reiterate everything that was experienced blew my mind. Listen, I've been doing this for six years. I've experienced a ton of phenomena. Um, I've been, you know, I've been psychically linked even since I was a kid. I just didn't recognize it or I didn't acknowledge it because it was scary and it was not um, accepted. Um, but when I was activated to my ascension journey, I really connected back to my spiritual roots and the, all these psychic abilities started coming through as it does. And um, in a number of different ways, like it'll it'll display itself. Everybody has psychic abilities. It's not these are gifts, yes, but everybody has these abilities, and it just is how you connect to it. Um, you might connect to it in a number of different ways. For some, you might have clear audience. For some, you might have um, great empathy and compassion and intuitive nudges. Um, for some, you might have visions. Um, so everybody's going to connect psychically in different ways, but you all have that. It's just, are you connected to it? Um, and we're going to have some workshops um, coming up starting in, I don't know when, starting soon um, to help develop spiritual development and, and connect you with yourself. Um, that's part of my plan as, as the business is unfolding. Um, so don't deny that within yourself. And, and if you fear that, you know, don't, don't rush yourself. Don't push yourself. Work through it as a process to opening yourself up. Um, so I, getting back to that, I've had amazing tons of phenomena and experiences, tons of visions, tons of things that have happened physically in my world. Um, I've connected with Merlin before. I've connected with dragons. I've connected with angels. Um, you know, but nothing was quite as visceral or potent as this. This was off the wall, off the freaking wall. <laughs> okay. Um, so, um, our first stop in the gardens, this was at Chalice Well. Chalice Well, again, is a, it's a trusted site in the UK, um, wherein it's a protected site is what I mean. It's protected by a trust in the United Kingdom. And it's a garden. And so where this is, there's the town of Glastonbury, and then you do a short walk, and there's Chalice Hill. And in Chalice w Hill, um, the garden and sanctuary, there's Chalice Well. And Chalice Well is is what the, the garden and sanctuary is actually called. Um, and then behind that, further up the hill, which we didn't actually get to, um, was the tour. Um, and we didn't need to for this trip. It wasn't necessary because we felt the energy and the energy was all around us. Um, that'll be next trip. <laughs> so our first stop in the gardens was on the stretch of lawn right out of the gate where two ancient looking trees bloom, standing tall and erect. We called them twin trees for the way that they were placed. And if you look at the pictures um, on my blog, they were standing right next to each other, but 
but with a lot of space in between. And wordlessly, all three of us were just drawn there. Um, even before I stepped foot in the open space between them, I had a vision of the landscaped area growing dense with trees around us, and the three of us standing together in this very spot in a medieval wood. So as I was moving towards those twin trees, as we called them, in the space, the open space in between them, and the way they were standing, it was, they were parallel to each other. It wasn't, you know, they were very parallel to each other, and it overlooked the rest of the gardens. It overlooked, um, basically, the Glastonbury. Um, so as I was with my friends getting called to this space that, that felt very much like it was a portal, like there was no other way to describe it as crazy as it sounds. It was a portal. I shouldn't say it's crazy anymore. Like I just, I should just trust this whole experience, but it was a portal. And, um, as I was moving towards it, I could see in my mind's eye, like the the landscaping which had been landscaped into a garden the hill had been landscaped into a garden growing very dense the garden was disappearing and the the land was growing very dense with trees and it felt very much like we were in a medieval wood um so the sensations the visions the clarity of this knowing that was unlike anything i've ever experienced before and I knew that I was meant to be here in this time and space with these two soul sisters. We've done this before, and that's how all of us felt. Um, this was ancient sisterhood that was igniting forgotten memories within the sacred site. And Kelly and Luna shared that they too were having a similar experience. And Kelly shared that she'd received directions that the three of us were supposed to hold hands in a single file line next to each other. So one next to each other, all of us looking out in the same direction. And as soon as she said that, Luna whirled around and she exclaimed that she'd heard the same thing. So we all stood three in a line holding hands. And um, that's not the, the first time that that would happen. Here we would have a shared experience. So we congregated between the trees and held hands, looking at all over the embankments and sacred pools of water, acutely aware that the tour and its remains of St. Michael's Tower was situated at a distance behind us. We received download after download, each of us sharing the visions we were experiencing. For myself, I felt like I was pulled back in time, called back to a place of ancient knowledge, wisdom, and higher understanding. I could feel the energy of time itself weaving around us, I could feel the empty gardens grow thick with trees from a medieval forest. I could see cloaks and ritual and healing in connection to this natural world that surrounded us. When I was, I want to say my early 20s, I was really connecting to paganism. Um, and paganism, I didn't have a word for it. Um, paganism is as close as I could get. It was connection to the natural world, spirituality within the natural world. It was feeling like there is healing within the natural world. And that's exactly what I felt here. And so when I learned later that Glastonbury is not only connected to Christianity, but also to Wiccan and pagan origins, that's the closest that I could get to how I felt because I've always felt connected more fully to God within nature, whether this is sitting out in a garden or in the woods or hiking, I've always felt really connected through nature. Um, I've always said, even when I was a young kid and reading Thomas's, Thomas Paine's The Common Sense of Man, I think that's what it's called, I can't remember right now as I'm channeling, um, I was in the ninth grade and I read his, um, whatever whatever the name of it is, and he said, my religion is the world. No, my country is the world and my religion is to do good. And that connected with me as nothing ever has. And I've carried that with me throughout my life. And so, again, that's my spiritual journey. I'm sharing my spiritual journey here. You will have your own personal journey, your own personal interconnectedness. Um, this is just me sharing parts of myself and my journey. Um, and you can relate to it as, as you do, as you will. Um, as it resonates or if it doesn't then you know, maybe there there are some takeaways here for you um, You know or you can just disregard it um, so I was seeing cloaks and ritual and Healing in connection to this natural world around us and it felt pure. I don't have a word for it That's what I was trying to get out with the energy of, of nature. It felt pure it felt connected, it felt spiritual, it felt honoring, it felt so incredibly loving. Not in what we've been known to fear, but in the loving energy that is 
God and the world and the universe and the physical nature of form around us. At one point, I saw Merlin. <laughs> this was wild. At, at one point, I saw Merlin actually like trudging up the hill towards us through the trees. He was wearing a cloak and he had a staff in his hand and he was using the staff to help guide his walk within his aging limbs. He was very old at the time and he's coming through now and he's he's laughing and he's saying ancient i was ancient um so he he i felt at the time as i was receiving this vision that he was a bridge between this lifetime 2023 and that lifetime that we were experiencing and i intuitively knew that he would be our guide through the rest of this experience so we continued to wander and explore the gardens finding little alcoves in which to pause and sit in silence at one point we were sitting together kelly was called to sit between me and luna and perform a healing session placing a hand on both of her shoulders as the energy began to flow i began to softly channel light language Bringing in new light codes, in my mind's eye, I saw Yeshua and Mary Magdalene approach. They placed a kiss on each of our foreheads, and then Yeshua kneeled before me and touched my feet. And Luna later mentioned that she had a similar experience. We filled our water bottles at the Lion's Head Spring, met a friendly cat that greeted us and guided us down a path before promptly turning back to stalk its dinner in the brush. Merlin's coming in now and saying, yeah, guess who that was? <laughs> um... And then we took some pictures together at the well, the chalice well, the actual well, more magic was unearthed. At this point, I was already blown away. I've experienced so much phenomena during the past six years of my ascension journey, tr truly all of my life, but nothing should surprise me now. Nothing, nothing compared to that day. The Chalice Well, also known as the Red Spring, like I mentioned, for the natural iron deposits in the water, is situated at the top of the sanctuary with stone steps leading to the opening of the Sacred Spring. Its cover is crafted from wrought iron and oak in the sacred symbol of this Vesica Pisces. In sacred geometry, this is known as the basic pattern for the Tree of Life, or the Seed of Life, with great harmonic resonance. And if you guys have been following my teachings over at Susan Dawn Spiritual Connections and the Sacred Union Energy Updates, the Twin Flame stuff that we've been channeling, um, because again, that's part of my personal journey. It might be part of your personal journey as well in, which, in that you were activated with a twin, with a sacred partner on the Sacred Union Path of Ascension. I've been channeling this for the past several months, actually, for I think for the past two years. And that this was like one part of your journey, this is the next part of your journey, this is the higher heart ascension, but it's all connected. There's an interconnectedness. I've been channeling this not knowing the significance of it. Not knowing, knowing it was called the Vesica Pisces, but not knowing the, the symbolism, the metaphor, and the significance of the Vesica Pisces and how it is and essentially the seed of life, the flower of life connected to the tree of life. Um, so that has great significance here as well. Um, so the Vesica Pisces, the symbol of the Vesica Pisces is all over this garden and it's on the cover, the wrought iron grate. It's on the cover of the well itself. And you can see that in the pictures as well. Um, actually, I'll show it to you here. I can find it. So just so you guys have, that's what the well looks like. Um, as you can see, it's also on the pathway. It was on the gate. It's all, it's all over the place. So, um, offerings are found at this site, and on this day there was a young woman that was sitting on the stone wall in meditation. Beautiful garden alcoves with benches surround this site so that one can observe and contemplate in solitude. I want to mention now, too, that Chalice Well is very connected to the divine feminine energy as a softness that has, I want to even say a luxury, and I don't mean luxury as in, like, bougie. I don't mean luxury as in material. I mean luxury as in a flow. Um, a leisure, uh, a divine kind of flowing energy about it, which is the divine feminine energy. Um, and that's important because of what we'll talk about later. So I arrived at the spring a bit behind Kelly and Luna. After taking a moment to admire the well, I spotted Kelly on one of the benches in a nearby alcove. I started to walk towards her, then stopped. I was being led in another direction, up a set of stone stairs and towards a wooden bench that overlooked the well. 
when I saw that Luna was on one bench to my left, she was a little bit on a higher level than I was, and Kelly was on my right, I felt my soul instantly light up in recognition of what we had created. We created a triangle. It was Trinity energy. Immediately in my mind's eye, I saw a warm golden thread wrapping around the three of us, spooling us into a divine cocoon. I tried closing my eyes to go into meditation, but my body was still and my eyes remained open, warmth flooding through me. My eyes were trained on the stone floor in front of me and the steps leading down into the well. And with my physical eyes, I saw a blue energy lift from the stone and take the shape of what I can only describe as runes. I couldn't interpret what I was seeing if not, even if I wanted to, but I knew what I was seeing were ancient symbols. It was a light blue energy. Well, it was. It reminded me of the energy of Archangel Michael and, and his blue light. Um, it was an energy that was seemed to be lifting from the stones themselves, and I was seeing it with my physical eyes. I've experienced energy with my physical eyes before, but it was nothing like this, in that it was actually taking shape and form. And runes is the only way that I know how to describe it. I couldn't interpret it. I don't know what the interpretation is, but it was like codes that I was seeing. Um... I felt powerful, sacred. There was no physical translation, just an unconscious integration that I understood would continue throughout the next few months, maybe even years, who knows. But more of this understanding of these experiences would be shown to us like a puzzle piece and it certainly has, especially now that I'm home and reflecting back on it. So after we explored the rest of the gardens and having both of them, both my friends had been there before, Kelly was called to ask if the White Spring was open. Around the corner from the sanctuary, there's what's known as the White Spring. It's now in a reservoir, but it's a water source that is issued from the Torah itself. It's an inner temple that is said to be the counterpart to Chalice Well, the masculine counterpart to Chalice Well. It's only open for a few select hours a day, and we considered it fate that when we arrived, it was open. It's divine guidance and timing that, like I said, we've been manifesting that has been following us throughout the rest of our trip. As we were walking out of the gardens, I was intuitively reminded of a dream I'd had many years ago that was connected to King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. And if you've been following me for a while, especially on Instagram, I had posted this back in, I can't remember, I think it was 2020. I had a dream that I was standing with my counterpart as part of a small group of maybe half a dozen people among the ruins of a castle. There was broken stone and dirt at our feet. We were taking turns, speaking of shared visions in earnest to each other. I was the last to speak, and I stepped forward, and instead of speaking, I began to sing about two round tables. And that was the refrain of the, of the song, two round tables, two round tables. Before us, where we were standing, was the broken remains of a stone round table. And as I woke up from that dream, I knew what the message was. The energy is returning, at least what the energy of Camelot represents. Magic, honor, integrity, wisdom, a golden age. But rather than a single round table, it was expanding to two, creating a symbol for infinity, indicating this energy is here to stay if we welcome it together and believe in its possibility. Now, standing on the pathway that is the entrance to Chalice Well Garden, I understood that this was also the Vesica Pisces, the seed of life. So much more insight is to come, and I could feel it. We're going to be channeling more with King Arthur, Guinevere, and Merlin, um, and Camelot, and Avalon, and all that energy. And if you guys want to start, I have already started a playlist dating back, I think, a couple months ago called the Camelot series. Merlin has come forth in a number of these channelings. He came forth in a number of the daily energy draws over on Susan Dawn's spiritual connections over the years. Um and in the sacred channeling. So you can go ahead and explore the playlists here, or I have put the Camelot series, the recent channelings, in one, one playlist, so you can check that out as well. Again, I'll link everything in the description box. So, we filled our bottles with water from the spring outside, merging the waters from the two springs, and I just felt it. I felt it, because this is what we had been channeling. Um, it was what I called union water, and if you guys, again, have followed me with regards to the um, sacred union channelings, the sacred union energy updates, you know that since 
forever, I've been channeling the two, the, the, the union energy being the three of cups. The three of cups is my union card. And it's what they showed to me was the two of cups, the two cups pouring into the third, that one chalice being that Trinity energy with God's source, the masculine, the feminine pouring into that third energy so that it is merged completely. When you pour one energy and a second energy into a third, when you pour from one cup of water into another cup of water, you don't know where one begins and the other ends. That's merged energy. That is union energy. And that's what they had showed to me so many years ago. And here it was as an actual physical representation of that metaphor and of that symbolism. And it was the masculine and the energy waters that were merging. Um... So I said the profundity of the two cups, the two of cups card, pouring into the third, the ace of cups card, for the merged energy of the masculine and feminine to birth forth a trinity energy was symbolically replicated here. So a little bit about the white spring. Considered a sanctuary to the divine masculine, again, as a counterpart to the divine feminine energy of Chalice Well, the energy again is palpable almost immediately. No pictures were allowed there, but no pictures were needed. The sacred site was to be felt. We approached down a set of stone steps into what can only be described as a musky candlelit cavern, a bathing pool attached to the spring in its center. Little alcoves with altars were placed around the perimeter. I was immediately drawn towards the back of the cavern where there was a small altar adorned with a statue of Cernunos. Crystals, candles, and burning incense, what I believe was frankincense, all around it. I sat on a little wood bench in front of it and opened my heart, my vision focused on the flickering flames of the candles. I want to pause here because I keep bringing it back and I keep saying, well, like in my mind, like, wait, 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 because I'm, I'm speaking about something else. But to keep bringing it back that when I was on the plane from uh, Philly to London, I was nervous because, again, I hadn't traveled in 15 years like this, um, you know, and there has been so much that has happened between then and now, including spiritual awakenings and ascension and heartbreak and loss and challenges and illness, especially illness. And so I was somewhat nervous, but I kept going within my heart space and calling on God and God and, and kind of going within my heart. So when I was on the plane, um, I, well, first when I was in the airport, I felt the masculine energy. I, it wasn't attached to a specific person anymore. It was just the energy. I felt him plop down in the seat beside me. And just as this energy of, I'm here, you don't have to worry. I am with you. And it felt like I could just sink into that safety and sink into that security. And that's important for what's to come. And then when I was up in the plane, soaring high above the clouds in the air, in the airplane, I said to God, Dear God, I give you what I no longer wish to carry. I lay these burdens at your feet. I give my anxious heart to you. It is yours. Please guide me along this journey, this journey home to myself, this journey home to you. And I almost cried because it felt like I was coming home to myself. It felt like I was coming home to God. This felt like a huge turning point along my journey. And again, you don't have to travel for these experiences. This was just the way my journey was unfolding, especially because travel has always been so important for me. And then I felt my lungs fill with a deep inhale and I felt that sacredness expand within my heart. I wrote, he is with me, the sacred masculine, not as a person or a projection or a reflection, but as an ever loving presence. He is within me always as a part of me that is also me. Allowing myself to receive this love is where I express myself fully and wildly within the holy nature of all that I am. My love for him, as for myself, teaches me. It's where I grow and expand. And this was just the beginning. So I am still integrating that. I am still understanding that. I am still finding ways to articulate that. Um, but more than that, I don't need to articulate it because it's something that I'm really feeling within myself. And I share that with you in case it resonates with you. It is the inner union that anchors in. The masculine is always present with you. Always. Don't attach it and affix it to a person. It will reflect in a person in your physical life, yes. It will. That is part of the outer 
or the inner becoming outer. It is part of the expression of love, the expression of union. But it is an expression of your soul. It is an expression of love. It is an expression of that union. It is an expression of yourself, just like the life that you create for yourself is an expression of yourself because it is an expression of the energy that you hold within. I began to really understand what the masculine presence is. So when I was sitting there in the white spring, I had a major activation and a major understanding. Um, let me just find my place again. So the energy of the white spring felt heavy, certainly heavier than chalice well, but not in a negative way. It just felt more grounded, more earthly, and more present. It felt masculine. And if you are in tune with the masculine and feminine energies, and I don't just mean your counterpart. I'm not talking about your outside person. I mean in tune with the masculine and feminine energies within you and what they represent and how they are felt within within the whole of the world. They're reminding me now of when I went to um, New York last year and to all those waterfalls, how it was a symbol of the masculine and feminine energies in nature expressing itself through nature and how it's expressed that way in all of nature, how the feminine is the wild energy of the water and the masculine energy is the grounded presence that contains that, not in control. That is the old paradigm. That is the illusion. That is the old template, the toxic template that we are releasing. But in the energy of Avalon, in the energy of Camelot and King Arthur and Guinevere, of that merging, that union, that, that honoring of each other, the masculine presence holds the feminine in safety and security. He's able to hold her emotions. He's able to hold her expression. He's able to hold her so that she can be fully her. That is the presence of the divine masculine energy, what a true conscious masculine is. So what I shared here, it felt more grounded, more earthly, more present. I could immediately sense the presence of the masculine energy in a way of only experience in meditations and channelings, not as a person or projection or reflection. I knew this wasn't just the divine masculine or even the conscious masculine as we've come to know through, through counterparts. This is the sacred masculine. And I heard that in my mind's reverberation. This is the sacred masculine. And I began to sob, hearing those words in my heart, feeling them filter into the very core of my being. I felt my masculine with me, not an attachment of a memory or a physical person, but as something that I have always felt connected to, that's been an intrinsic part of me, a love that I've experienced since long before I was aware of this journey, long before I even had the words. My twin, who I will still call him my twin because he activated me into this journey, my twin helped me to remember this. And for myself, what I've realized along this journey is I will always hold love for that person. And whether or not he ends up being that sacred partner, whether he ends up being that person, he activated me to that remembrance. His love activated me to that remembrance. And that is what the twin flame journey is. It's an activation to remembrance. A remembrance of the union of the sacred masculine and the sacred feminine. And for me, personally, you might experience your journey in a different way, but for me personally, I had to go through an experience of releasing the attachment to the memory and the specifics of a person in order to come home to that conclusion within myself. And I do very much feel like there is a sacred partnership that is part of our physical experience. But for me, I had to release. I really had to release everything. I had to let go of everything. Really let go of everything every worldly attachment, everything, to recognize that everything was already inside of me. And um, there are experiences that I've had along my sacred union journey with my person um, that are sacred to me and private to me, but that have reminded me of that. So um, I heard him say, I'm coming home. And I kept feeling a desire to run. I kept feeling a desire to flee. Like as I was sitting there on that bench, I kept wanting to run out of that inner temple. I kept wanting to, to flee and run from what it was that I was experiencing. And it was like my heart and my mind was in a tug of war. But I stilled myself. 
I forced myself to stay, and I dropped into my heart space, and I cleared any of the fear and any of the anxiety that was there. And I kept fighting this battle within myself, and finally I felt the surrender. I felt the masculine energy anchoring in, and I heard him say, I'm not running anymore. And I felt a wave of relief and peace wash over me, and it was like a final battle of ego and surrender. And then it's release, and I felt its embrace. And what it felt like was just love, pure love, unconditional love, love without expectation, love without anticipation, just presence and love and respect and honoring of each other. And it felt ancient and it felt present and it felt true. I was crying the whole time. I don't know if words will ever do this justice. It felt like home. Like I was surrounded with an energy of sacred protection from the masculine. I've never felt anything like this before. An honoring, a security, a protectiveness engulfed me. I think so long for divine feminines. The feminine energy, whether you're a male or a female, whether you're a masculine or a feminine, the feminine energy has not felt protected, has not felt safe in this world. Even if you are a male in a masculine energy, your feminine energy, you had to suppress it because it is not honored in the society. It is not honored in this world. It's going to be. It is now. That is what is shifting. And the more that we honor the feminine within all of us, the feminine within life itself, the more it comes into balance, the more it comes into union the more everything changes. And what was so pivotal about this is I felt that protectiveness, the masculine wanting to honor and protect the feminine in a way that I have never allowed myself to feel before. In a way that my inner masculine has always wanted to protect me. In the way that I had moved into my masculine energy in order to protect me. This was a a security and a safety and a protectiveness that felt just so, so loving. Then I was guided to drink the water from the bottle, the union water created from Chalice Well in the White Spring, the sacred masculine and the sacred feminine as one. And later in talking to my friend Kelly, who had been on the other side of the cavern, it was shared with me that she was guided to drink her water as well. Um, so I go in in that blog about Glastonbury Abbey and the peace that was felt and a little bit of the history there. Um, but, but this, this was big. This was huge. This was the twin energy and all of us, Kelly and Luna and I were all twins and we felt it. And especially within the sisterhood, we were meant to be here in this space and time. I've had that sisterhood with others. Um, you know, even with some of my, my friends who are not on a spiritual path, we, we are that soul family. And for those who are on the spiritual path, you've heard me talk about my soul sisters before. We all maybe have different lifetimes together, but we're all kind of converging now in this lifetime. Um, for this experience, I really believe Kelly and Luna and myself, we were meant to be together um, because we were together previously in that very spot, in that very same sacred space, in that very same sacred site. So um, I want to share that experience as a foundation for what is to come, um, because we're going to be channeling a lot more. We're going to be channeling with Merlin, and what's interesting is we went into a shop, and um, I was called, my friend wanted, wanted me to take a look at these incense jars and um, she mentioned that she had gotten one from about Callie Ma and I picked up one for Callie as well um, because I connect very deeply with Callie. Callie has been a, uh, a guide for me over the past couple of years, especially as my life has gone through like a complete destruction and rebirth. And I have felt her guiding me through the cyclical endings and beginnings and guiding me more into my wild feminine, anchoring into my authenticity and my wild feminine energy, that divine feminine energy. Um, but instead of Kali Ma, I was immediately drawn to Merlin. And I kept wanting to put it back because I'm like, I don't need any more suit. I don't need stuff to take home. Like, I only wanted to, to bring carry-ons. Like, I didn't want souvenirs, but I couldn't put it put it down. So Merlin is guiding us still. 
Um, he's always been guiding us, and he'll continue to, and we're going to channel more with him. King Arthur and Guinevere want to come through as well. Um, just the overall energy of Camelot. Guinevere's energy stepping through right now just as a soft energy, divine feminine energy. She has a lot that she'll want to say as well um, in some upcoming channelings, um, as well as how it all relates to Twin Flames, Sacred Union, the divine masculine and feminine, um, sacred union path of ascension. Even if you're not on the sacred union path of ascension, remember the divine masculine, divine feminine is part of the, the universe as a whole. Um, it's part of the global collective. So even if you're not experiencing that as your path of ascension, there are a number of different ways up the mountain is still part of, of the ascension journey. Um, because the masculine template and the feminine template is being healed at this time and there are new codes that are anchoring in for the the balance of the energies a harmony um i'm hearing a harmony between like the, the species between the genders not genders between the energies um male and female feminine and masculine but um is affecting the, the, the globe as well. It's affecting our global ascension or collective ascension as well. So take these messages as they resonate for you. Feel free to disregard them if they don't. If these readings, if these channelings don't disregard with you or, or don't resonate with you, disregard it. There might be other teachers out there that are for you that might resonate more with your truth. Um, spirituality is a personal pursuit. It's a personal experience. Um, so take what resonates for you and your truth. All right. I am sending you all so much love. I'm so happy to be back. I'm so happy to be, um, doing this again. Like I said, we're going to be focused here, um, for the most part, doing some deeper dives here. Um, and I hope that you'll stick around and join me. I'm sending you all so much love and so much light and we'll see you soon. Bye.